go. Another day, another episode. So this time the camera is like right over there for me. <laughs> Where is it? Right there. Yeah. Camera is right over there for me. Um, normally I have it to where it's like this, uh, which puts the camera over here. Uh, however, because my charger plugs in on this end, uh, I am able to more comfortably hold my phone like this. Uh, ah, yes. I just slept when I last logged out, so this would be technically immediately after the previous episode. Uh, that means, uh, that means A, I want to check how many eggs I have. Because if I have too many eggs, I'm going to need to fire off the dispenser. Um, yeah, it's, it's easier on the camera if I do it this way. Uh, despite the fact that my thumb will constantly get in the way. Uh, let's see. Almost three stacks. And I don't need to do it yet. Uh, I will actually hide the face cam, because that is causing a lot of the lag. Like, you can already see the lag's starting to clear up. I can sit here and just kind of spam my vision all over the place, and I'm not actually walking anywhere other than just walking around the same room, see? It's the same room. Uh, I was just doing that to demonstrate, like, yeah, see? Uh, but I was just doing that to demonstrate the, uh, the difference in the lag. Like, with the camera on, I get noticeable lag. With the camera off, no lag. Uh, by the way, if you ever want to do this manually, or perhaps you're in this type of view mode, all you have to do is just one of these. And voila! Or you can do it the other way, uh, of starting over here. Uh, or you could start over here. It really doesn't matter where you start in the pattern. This is technically a shaped pattern. However, uh, it, it's a shaped pattern that requires nine kelp in a grid. So I, I don't know how much of a shape pattern it could be considered as, but it is a shape pattern, technically. Uh, I, I never really understood why Mojang made that specific pattern a shaped pattern, because Quite honestly, it doesn't need to be a shape pattern. Uh, there's no reason it should be a shape pattern other than the fact that it is a 3x3 three three grid pattern. Five, six, seven, eight. Like, other than that specific fact, there's no reason for that to be a shape pattern. Uh, isn't it? Uh, the various, uh, the various recipes in Minecraft are either shape patterns or non-shape patterns, or they're machine patterns, uh, in case you're wondering. Uh, I have 
obviously studied some of the uh, modding framework quite extensively in the Java version. Uh, a lot of that knowledge does not transfer over to the uh, the C++ version, which is the one I'm on, the, the Bedrock version. Uh, in case you wondered what the difference between the two versions was, that's the difference. Java is written in Java, and then there's the Bedrock version, which is written in C++. Uh, C++ is a very difficult programming language. I've said it before, and I will keep saying it because it's true. C++ is chaos if you're trying to learn it. If you're a newbie and you don't have an actual teacher or a mentor to teach you C++, C++ is nuts. C++ is crazy. Okay. I've tried learning it. It's very difficult. And that's putting it mildly. Uh, for comparison, I learned... Here's, here's a list of some of the... Some of my qualifications for judging a programming language. Uh, you, you might wonder, okay, well, how do you know that... Uh, C++ is such a difficult language. Maybe it's just you. Maybe you're just not good at learning programming languages. Okay, first off, I have self-taught myself multiple programming languages, which sounds impressive. And it is. It is impressive. Okay? I don't deny that. That is a very impressive feat. It's a very difficult thing to do. Not many people are able to teach themselves a programming language. And I understand that. However, here's something to consider. Okay? I have taught myself uh, JavaScript, uh, which is why I'm no longer allowed to play RuneScape. Uh, <laughs> they may have disagreed with the things I was studying with JavaScript. Uh, however, I was actually improving the modding community of uh, of RuneScape. The the people who were scripting, I was improving it because they did not want to bury the bones of all of these chickens they were killing. Like all of these all of these scripts were set up for uh, for killing chickens, right? A very popular thing in RuneScape because, oh my god, you go through so many arrows. And on top of that, people are like mining up Mithril, mining up Adamantium, mining up all of these really high-end ores and using them to, uh, with the, what was it, eight coal per ingot for Adamantium, uh, just to make an single adamantium ingot so that they could make an arrowhead. And then with that arrowhead, they then mix uh, feathers and sticks, which is a very common recipe for arrows. Feathers, arrows, and sticks. Very, very common recipe. Super common. Uh, so they would... You know, they'd combine all of these uh, items, and they'd make an adamantium arrow, right? And that's not even the best arrow. Okay, there's there's rune. Rune requires, like, 12 coal. Okay. Uh, and if you think, well, uh, that's, that's a lot of coal just for two items, oh, you don't know the half of it. There's still mithril and steel. Oh, <laughs> Yes, the steel metals. Ah, uh, yes. The, uh, the metallic, uh, carbon-rich steel was, uh... Steel ingots alone were too cold, right? And then the, the adamantium was, like, eight coal. The mithril was four coal. The rune was six coal. Or no, the rune was twelve coal. Right. Uh, so, as you might have noticed, a lot of things use coal. 
And yes, that does correlate to a supply and demand issue. Coal is expensive on RuneScape. If you want to earn money, mine coal. If you're playing RuneScape, just mine coal. Become a miner, mine coal, sell coal. You will make so much money. You can overprice it probably... You could probably go about 150% market price, and you would probably still sell it. It might take a little longer, but you'd probably still sell it, because people will just walk up and they'll be like, oh my god, I do not want to wait for coal. Buy coal. Default price. Didn't immediately buy it. Okay, must be out of stock of default price. Instead, just go for the 110% price. Still nothing. Crap. Uh, I don't really want to wait for coal. Uh, I have better things to do than go out and mine coal. Which, by the way, I will tell you now. If you're going to do this option, be prepared to fight for it. Okay? Because people will be out there mining it. And as I mentioned, there is a supply and demand issue. And RuneScape decided to embrace this idea by making it so that each time any person mines the coal, the coal will despawn for all people. As opposed to the old way that they used to do it, where it used to be that if you were mining coal, you'd just find a coal node and just start whaling on it and just, you know, dig up all the coal you need. Uh, but now, no, no, now we can't have it easy. What do you think this is? Old school RuneScape? Ha ha ha, of course not, he says sarcastically. <clears throat> RuneScape, uh, RuneScape is difficult, let's put it that way. Uh, not difficult challenging, RuneScape is difficult annoying. RuneScape will give you a migraine if you let it, <laughs> okay? Uh, RuneScape is, is difficult. So that was how I learned uh, JavaScript was I was supplementing their scripts by optimizing the flaws in their scripts out because nobody was actually working on their scripts and it's like, oh my god, this is JavaScript. This is so easy. Okay, uh, my first encounter with the scripting language was actually action script, which is super easy. Okay, it's it's literally as it sounds. It's exactly like you're playing a text-based uh, RPG where you're just stating actions. It's like, I want to build a door. Okay, you have a variable named door. <laughs> it's like, wait, it's that easy? Yes, it's that easy. What's next? <laughs> it's like, oh my, this is really easy. Uh, this could get out of hand. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, it can. What's next? It's like, uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, but instead, uh, nobody was really optimizing the, the scripts. So I went in and I optimized them and I started making them better. Uh, I added, for example, a... Uh, section to their chicken farming script where they were farming chickens for arrows and I took that script and I made it into uh, I made it into a script which would actually open the door if someone came along and closed the door because every now and then a chicken will, will spawn inside the door uh, and so, uh, since everyone's using this chicken farming script, this, this chicken farming script, they'll just automatically run over to the chicken, you know, it clicks the chicken for them. That's the whole point of the script, is it does the work for you. It's literally the whole point of the script. Uh, the... Ah, uh, yes, I remember now. I 
cleared out the floor here, and I was pondering my options. Okay, so I do need to resurface the floor, meaning I need to rip up the whole floor still. I do also want to grab these iron, uh, these diamonds. I know I said I wanted a fortune pickaxe, but eh, I can do that with other diamonds. Doesn't really matter, you know? I mean, it does, but it doesn't. I know, it's more work. I don't care. <laughs> I could fill in this entire floor, but instead, I'm just going to fill in this wall. Because I'm resurfacing the whole floor anyways, so I might as well. Uh, but yeah, the... Uh, the process of, uh, of collecting feathers is very straightforward, except there's a few flaws in the spawning mixed with a few flaws in the scripting. So I was like, hey, I see room for improvement. I want to, you know, get that improvement. I want a bear script. And I looked around for a few weeks. And I was like, hey, uh, nobody's got a better script, uh, but there's, like, room for improvement on your script. Is it okay if I modify your script, like, use it as a base and, uh, make it better? And they were like, yeah, sure, I'm done with that script anyway. I haven't worked on that script in three months, man. Like, go for it. If you want it, you can, you can claim it as your own, put your title on it, whatever. You know, you're putting in work, so yeah, I guess it's technically your script now if you, if you tweak it. Otherwise, it's my script. Like, we each have our own upload, so it's fine. If someone else comes along and they use your script, then great. Uh, if they come along and they use my script, great. I've already got like 10,000 downloads. If you make a better one, then you're going to definitely get a lot of downloads. You're going to get uh, famous amongst the RuneScape scripting community. Uh, so, and of course, for, uh, legal reasons, I'm not mentioning specifically which buddy it was that, uh, was being, uh, used for the, the RuneScape scripting, but, uh, if you're involved in that community, you know who it is. If you're clever enough to find them, then you probably are, are just clever enough to get caught. <laughs> uh, they do have very decent anti-bot uh, detection, and they have very decent uh, anti-bot... Uh, like, like, they're good at, at stopping the bots. Let's just put it that way. So if you're planning on botting to to play RuneScape, uh, word of advice, don't. <laughs> I know it's very boring, but the, uh, the punishment for getting caught while you're botting on RuneScape is to have your account banned. Uh, I should know. Uh, my account on RuneScape was Blue64. And guess what? I was actually on the leaderboard for cooking. However, since I got banned, I got removed from the leaderboard, and they never let me back in. And I was like, well, you know. <laughs> I, uh, I tried to get my account back. It's a very old account. It was so old. Uh, it was created back when... RuneScape asked you to choose at the start if you were going to be a PvP character. And then, depending on what you chose, the whole world was either PvP or not PvP. Just all of RuneScape. Which was great. You know, that is a wonderful way to do it. If you want to be PvP, great. Pick right up front. If you don't want to be PvP, great. Pick right up front. You know? If you want PvE, just pick PvE. 
If you want PvP, pick PvP. If you want a play, player versus player character, then make one. Uh, and that was actually where the creation of the pure accounts uh, started, in case anyone ever wondered that. Um, the reason why this is a topic, by the way, is because of scripting languages. Uh, I learned JavaScript because I was playing RuneScape, and I was like, I want to learn this scripting language and utilize the scripting language to make better scripts. And they were like, go for it. And so I did. Not many people are able to do that. You know, that is a rare talent. Uh, I have that rare talent where I'm able to just look at a scripting language and pick it up. Okay, keep that in mind because that's kind of important. Uh, I also went ahead and I furthered that knowledge into the realm of Java. Not just JavaScript, but actual full-on Java, which is a little bit more strict, a little bit more stern, but the Java programming language is actually decently simple once you get the hang of it and once you know the notation. Uh, it's it's very straightforward language. Uh, it's purely built in logic, so everything literally just makes sense. <laughs> it's the only way the programming language works is if everything makes sense. It's like, what is this? Uh, well, that's, that's a static value. Oh, okay, what's this? Uh, that's a variable value. Uh, so you have value and you have variable. Okay, uh, you know, and then on top of that, you have to like define everything right up front. So you have to define if something is a variable before you can use the variable, you know, which I find amazing because that saves so much stress when you're trying to figure out what you're doing with everything. You can just sit there and go, well, this is going to be something that never changes. So if someone tries to change this, they can't. They just can't, okay? Because it's a value. It does not change. If someone tries to change a variable, that's different. You're going to have to use some other form of protection for your variables. You're going to have to use some sort of uh, checksum verification. Uh, which basically means you run it through an equation that makes sure that nobody has tampered with your equation because if they did, then you're going to need to do something to lock them out of uh, continuing to interact with your program because they're tampering with your program and making it not act properly. Mind you, that's not always the case. You might want people to alter your program, uh, but most of the time you won't want people altering your program. Uh, most programmers uh, trust other programmers' uh, programming languages about as much as they trust... Uh, as much as they would trust a Sith <laughs> around a Jedi. Which is not much. Like, you don't trust Sith around Jedi. Because we all know what a Sith does to a Jedi. They are arch enemies, you know? Uh, and if you're wondering why the Sith and the Jedi don't get along, by the way,